While Goku was beating All for One to a pulp, no one noticed that he was discreetly using his quirk to activate the machine. Once it got started, it was too late to stop it. Goku attempted to destroy the entrance while Vegeta and Tensei attempted to pull Tarbo out. However, it seemed as if there was an electric barrier that prevented any interference. Goku went back to All for One and demanded him to tell him how to turn the machine off. And All for One just laughed. Goku proceeded to break his fingers, yet All for One continued to laugh. The portal then appeared, and three figures walked through the machine. What if... Goku was in Three figures emerged from the portal, and to all for one surprise, they weren't who he thought they would be. They were all versions of Goku. All for one was so confused. He was sure his plan would work. He knew that in his weakened state, he wouldn't be able to take them all on right now. He had to escape and find a way to get rid of them another time. Before he warped away, he made sure to bring Tarbo with him in hopes that he could continue his research and find a way to make his dream a reality. All for one had been in a lot of high stress situations before, which is why he was able to process everything so quickly and get away while Goku, Vegeta, and Tensei Ida were all distracted by the three Gokus who came out of the portal. Once all for one and Tarbo were gone, the portal turned off by itself and now Goku, Vegeta, and Tensei were left with a new mess to deal with. Vegeta decided to look around for other abandoned places where All for One would potentially hide out in in order to find his brother, stop All for One's plans, and hopefully save his parents. Meanwhile, Tente Ida decided to analyze what All for One left behind to see if he left any clues. That left Goku to babysit the other Gokus and explain to them what was going on. He invited to bring all of them over to his house and explain everything. The Gokus were a bit hesitant at first, but they decided to go along with him because they couldn't deny that trustworthy face. Back at Goku's abode, it got a bit cramped, but everyone seemed to manage just fine. He then explained All for One's plan to bring multiple versions of himself to this universe so they could work together in order to conquer the multiverse. However, the machine must have malfunctioned because it seemed like a bunch of versions of Goku were brought through instead. In order to keep track of everyone in an efficient way, the Gokus decided that they should number themselves off. Goku 1 is the Goku who resided in the correct universe. Goku 2 shared a bit about his backstory with what would be known as the Council of Gokus. He was from an alien race known as Sans, but was raised on Earth after planet Vegeta exploded. On Earth, he learned how to be kind and how to use martial arts in order to protect Earth from dangerous threats. He had a child named Gohan and a wife named Chi Chi. He was one of the strongest people in his universe. Goku 3 shared that he was a student of UA Academy, just like Goku 1. He has a laser quirk as well, and he inherited the quirk one for all from the number one hero, Deku. Goku 4 was much more hesitant to share his story because he wasn't as morally pure as the others. He talked about how he was manipulated by the All for One in his timeline in order to kill his own father in the top heroes of the world. They plunged the world into an age of darkness together, but eventually Goku realized the error of his ways. He turned on All for One and ended him off for good. He then decided to live the rest of his life in solitude, away from civilization, so he couldn't hurt anyone anymore. The other Gokus were very disturbed by Goku 4's origins, and his presence in general. However, they decided to give him a shot at redemption. Goku 2 had talked about how he had given a lot of his former rivals a chance to redeem themselves, and they ended up becoming some of his greatest allies. As they were deep in their conversation, Goku 1 received a phone call from Tensei saying that All for One had released a gigantic villain in the middle of the city. It seemed as if he did it to stall these heroes as they attempted to find him. If they didn't stop this villain, many innocents would die so the Gokus decided that they would take care of it. They made their way into town and confronted this villain. Just as Goku 1 was getting ready to fight this beast, Goku 2 moved in the blink of an eye. It took a while for Goku 1 to even process what had just happened. But a few seconds later, he realized what had happened. Somehow, Goku 2 moved so fast that his movements were not visible. He then hit the villain with so much force that he was knocked out immediately. The other Gokus were amazed by Goku 2's abilities. He was clearly the fastest and strongest amongst them all. But despite that, the threat of the villain was not over. The villain had the ability to clone itself, and Goku 2 only took down one clone. However, finding the rest of the clones and taking them out actually ended up being super easy. 
barely an inconvenience. Since Goku already knew what this one's energy felt like, he knew that the similar energy signatures across the city must have been the other clones. Before the other Gokus could even act, Goku 2 swiftly went through the city and took each of them down on his own. It took a while for the other Gokus to catch up to him, but when they did, they just saw Goku 2 chilling next to the unconscious body of the original giant villain. Goku's 1 and 4 were impressed by Goku 2 and admiring his abilities while Goku 3 noticed something strange about the unconscious body. It started glowing red. He recognized that the body was rigged to explode if he failed, so with all his strength, he picked up the giant and chucked him into the sky. Then he used his lasers to push him out of the atmosphere where he exploded in space. After all this, Goku 1 realized he had nothing to be afraid of anymore. It was only a matter of time before All for One was found, and he had very reliable teammates who could back him up in the fight for the multiverse. While the Gokus were temporarily distracted from celebrating their complete victory of this small battle, a sudden laser came and pierced through Goku 2's chest. Goku 1 immediately looked for the source, and it was from Goku 4. The other Gokus just stared at Goku 4 with confusion. They briefly thought that they could trust him so they couldn't understand his actions. He told them he really just hung around them so he could learn why he was in this universe and to eliminate any major threats towards him. Once he saw how Goku 2 was leagues ahead of him in strength, he knew that he was the one who needed to be taken out. The other Gokus tried to attack Goku 4, but they were all too weak for him. They needed more power. But the real powerhouse was down, and he showed no signs of getting up. Goku 4 decided he was done messing around with these weaklings, and he decided to go for the kill shot. Goku 2 used the last of his strength to teleport everyone but Goku 4 to Tensei Ida. He was seconds away from dying, so he told the other Gokus to make sure his body got back to his earth. He passed away before Tensei had time to treat him. Meanwhile, Goku 4 decided to go and find All for One. All for One was confused about how he was found as he thought he was the only one who knew about this secret location. Goku 4 revealed that he was in fact All for One from his universe. The original All for One was getting sick, but before he died, he transferred the quirk All for One to Goku 4. The consciousness within that quirk fused with Goku 4, creating an entirely new being within Goku 4's body. He became All for Goku. Like and subscribe for part 5.